Construct a histogram for the following set of 42 test scores. Use five classes and start your first class at 40. Okay, so they give us the test scores here. There's um, several of them. What we want to do here is to, um, as our first step, is to determine the class width. Now, so we, so we know that we're going to be using five classes, and we can look at the numbers since they're in order and figure out the smallest and the largest value. At that moment, we can determine the formula for class width because the formula for class width is essentially this. It's going to be the range divided by the number of classes. So in this problem, the range is going to be 95 minus 40, or in other words, 55, right? So it'll be 95 minus 40. And if we divide by the number of classes, in this case, use five classes, it says, then we'll have five at the bottom of this, and we'll end up having 55 over five. And when you do the arithmetic there, of course, you're going to end up with 11. So the value then for our class width is 11, or at least that's what it seems like. The only problem with that number is that if you test it, it's probably not going to work. Because whenever this turns out to be a whole number, this formula turns out to be a whole number, it usually does not work. It usually means that our last value will fall outside of the last category. So usually we have to add a little space. How much space? Well, a lot of times if it's only five categories, you can add a lot of extra space and still have it work out. So we might try 12. Let me just show you that 11 doesn't work though. The way I'm going to show that is I'm going to actually use 11 to construct five categories and you'll see that the categories do not accomplish the task. In other words, 95 probably, the highest number 95, probably won't fit into the last category. Let's check just to be sure though. If we were to start at 40, like they ask us to, right? So start our first category at 40, and I add 11 to 40, I will get 51, right? If I add 11 to that, I will get 62. If I add 11 to that, I will get 73. And if I add 11 to that, I will get 84. Now at that point, when I come over here to get the other side of these categories or these classes, this 40 will go up to 50, right? Because I don't want to spill into this category, I have to end this one before I get there. So I start this at 50, if I add 11 to that, of course at that point I'll have 61, and then 72, and then 83, and then 94. Now, I added 11 to 83 and got 94, so that's the last number that my table can accommodate, but I have a number of 95, I have several 95s actually, and they're not going to fit into this table now will be outside of the last category. That means this set of values does not work. So I must choose something else. What we're going to choose is 12 instead. So instead, we're going to take our, start our category off at 40, as we're supposed to, but we're going to use 12. So if I add 12 to that, I will end up with 52. Add 12 to that. So again, we're not using 11 here anymore. We're going to go ahead and use 12 as our class with instead, right? So I add 52, then I would have 64. Then add 12 to that, I will get 76. Then add 12 to that, and I will get 88. Okay, now at that point I have five categories started. I will finish up the other sides by again taking this category all the way up to right before this one begins. So we'll use 51 as the end of that first category. Then we'll add 12 to that, we'll get 63. Add 12 to that, we'll get 75. Add 12 to that, you'll get the 87, add 12 to that, and you will get 99. Okay, so that's it, there are your five categories. Now you see that the last category ends at 99, which means it will accommodate the 95s that we have in our data set. So the last category does indeed fit our largest value, so that's good. Now we can call these our classes. Okay, now from there, the next step of constructing a histogram is to come up with the frequencies. In order to come up with the frequencies, we just simply have to count how many of the numbers fall into each of these categories. So how many values, for example, fall into this first category from 40 to 51? Well, if we count here, one, two, three numbers fall into that category. How many of the numbers fall into this category? 52 to 63. That's one, two, three, four. I count four. How many in the other categories, 64 to 75? Well, that'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 of them fall into this category. 
How about the next one from 76 to 87? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven numbers fall into that category. And how many fall into the 88 to 99 range? Well, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And there it is. Those are all our numbers. All right, from there, if we want to form the histogram, the next thing we ought to do is to come up with two extra columns. One of them will be called the class boundaries, and the other will be called the relative frequency. Let's get the relative frequencies first, and then we'll do the boundaries in a moment. So the relative frequencies are pretty easy. We first have to total up this column here to figure out n, the total sample size in the problem. Now, it should add up to 42 test scores. So we can double check that, but it says that we have 42 test scores, so this should add up to 42. All right, well, if I did three and seven, that makes 10. That'll make here 29, 29 and 13 does indeed make 42. So it counts, it adds up to 42 like it's supposed to. Now we can come up with a relative frequency. To get the relative frequency, we simply have to divide each of these frequencies by 42. So in other words, we'll do 3 divided by 42 to get the first 1. If I do that here, let's see what that gives me. If I do 3 divided by 42, I end up with the answer basically 0 0.07. I'm just rounding them to two places, right? 4 divided by 42, get the answer uh, 0.10 if I round to two places. 19 divided by 42 gives me the answer 0.45. 7 divided by 42, I get the answer 0 0.17, 0 0.17, and then 9 divided by 42, and I get my final value of 0.21. If you check this, you'll see it adds up to roughly 100, or 0.1, or 1.0, pardon me, which is basically the same as 100%, just in decimal form. All right, so now that we have the relative frequencies, the next step is to get the class boundaries. Well, I'm going to get a new sheet of paper out and we'll do it there, do the class boundaries and the relative frequencies, and then we'll finish the drawing for the histogram. Okay, so here is the same table we were just creating, but I've separated basically the classes, relative frequencies here, and in between I've put the class boundaries. What we're going to do is figure out what those class boundaries are. If you remember the technique, basically what we do is we look at these two numbers here, always these numbers on that first diagonal, and we're going to ask ourselves, what's the difference between these two numbers? If I subtracted them, what do I get? Well, when I subtract them, you'll see that I get the number 1, correct? 52 minus 51 is 1. And then what I do is I take half of that. I always chop that in half. In this case, that will work out to be 0.5. And once I have that value, 0.5, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to subtract it from this number. So I'll do 40 minus 0.5, which is going to give me 39.5. And then what I do is I add it to these numbers all the way down the row. Actually, we can add it to this one, giving me 51.5, right? And then we add it to the next one, 63.5, 75.5, 87.5, and 99.5. There's another way to get these, though. I could have just added my class width. We said our class width was 12, right? If we did 40 plus 52, if we subtracted these two numbers, we'd get the number 12, and that's our class width, remember? If I add the 12 to each of these, you'll see I get these remaining values. So if I added 12 to this, I would get that number. If I added 12 to that, I would get this number. If I added 12 to that, I would get that number, right? So I can generate all the remaining ones just by adding 12. Here, we don't really need the other side of this. If we did do it, though, you would see that it goes to 51.5, right? The next one would be 63.5. If I added 12 to this one, I would have, what, 75.5, you know, so on and so forth, and then 87.5. But I really only need these guys here. Those are the ones that I need to construct my histogram, because it's that that we're going to label the x-axis with when we do our drawing. All right, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and take out our graph here. So I've created a little table here, boundaries labeled on the x-axis, percents on the y-axis. Remember, relative frequencies are the same as percents once you multiply by 100. So remember, of course, this is the same as 7%, and this one would be 10%, and this one would be 45%, and 17%, and lastly, 21%. 
So that's easy enough to do. All right, now what I'm going to do is label each of these boundaries. Now you'll see I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have exactly one more class boundary than I do classes, right? If I have five classes, I'll have six boundaries, six unique boundaries, right? So let's go ahead and put six marks on our drawing, evenly spaced out. All right, now that I have those all spaced out, I'm going to label them. Let's do 39.5, 51.5, 63.5, 75.5, 87.5, and lastly 99.5. Okay, so I've labeled the boundaries just in order, starting with 39 and going all the way across to 99.5. This originally was started at zero, so I'm going to put a little mark here which just indicates I chopped off part of the number line so that we can start at 39 right here, real close to the zero. All right, from there, what I'm going to do is label the y-axis with these percents. Now, you see the percents range from our smallest being 7 up to our highest being 45. So maybe I can do, um, if I wanted multiples of 10%, that might work. So if I did that, I might need five marks, right? One, two, three, four, five. And then I could do 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. This gives me a full range of percentages that will accommodate all these values. And then we just draw rectangles, right? This first rectangle would essentially be 7% um, tall. That means the rectangle that would go from 39.5 to 51.5 would be about 7% tall, so a little shorter than the 10 there, right? And then if I did the same for the next one, notice how it starts here at 51.5, which is the same place the last one ended. That's purposeful because we don't want to have any gaps between these rectangles. So we're going to join the side here with the 63.5, and we're going to go up to 10% this time. So maybe up to 10 right there. And of course, if I wasn't drawing this by hand, it would look a little better, but that's fine. It gets the job done, right? And then 63.5 to 75.5, that's supposed to be 45. So that's way up here, right? almost up to the middle and draw your rectangle over there and then from there you're going to do the next one which is about 17 percent as a little less than 20 so it'd be about maybe this high I don't know and then just one more rectangle it's 21 percent tall so it's a little bit taller than 20 so maybe that's about right there let's say and that's basically what the histogram would look like given these particular categories one little detail I want to mention is that we didn't have to use a class width of 12, right? We could have used a class width of, say, you know, maybe 11.5 or 11.2 or 11.3. All of those probably would have worked. In fact, we could probably use a ton of different class widths, 11.9, 11.8, 11.85. Those would all work. Um, I chose 12 because I wanted to keep it as a whole number if I could. All right, that's fine. This is the drawing when you use 12. If you used 11.2, you would have a different drawing. But neither one of those would be better than the other, right? It's just a personal preference. Um, you might, for example, if you were using a computer, run it under seven, several different class widths just to see different shapes that would emerge, just to see which one um, pr provides a better picture, or the one that you might uh, decide is better based on some criteria other than what we've done here.